addiction, alcohol, smoking, drugs, gambling. I'm gonna be addressing each of those in this video because I'm thankful to say it's not part of my life anymore. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how I overcame those things to be able to support you if you're going through addiction and you want to solve that. This is Simon Lovell bringing you growth in under 10 minutes. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, do that and also hit that bell to make sure that you get updates. Now, where did it all start for me? Where was my journey? Well, at the age of 16, I started drinking. I worked for video games magazines back in the UK. So after work, we would go to the pub and drink and there would be tequila shots and everything going. So that's where my drinking started. My smoking started shortly after that when the smokers would get an extra break. And so I wanted a break and so I started smoking. Isn't it crazy when we think about sometimes how we started something? So that was for me. Then I became a personal trainer in 2005, and then I started to gamble. I would go out in drinking, clubs, I would get back early hours of the morning, and I can remember what started gambling for me was one big win of a roulette spin, and I won about 6,000 pounds, and then I lost it all again, but I got hooked. Then came the drugs, which I got introduced to by another personal trainer. I worked as a personal trainer back in the UK, and I went around his house on a Friday night, bottle of Budweiser, then a white packet came out, that was cocaine, then went out for the evening, then there was drugs, ecstasy, and then I was in this period of addiction with, you know, drinking, smoking, gambling, all of these things combined together, and I was at a completely unaware stage of my life. What really shifted for me was you know, there's this voice sometimes, right? Maybe while you're watching this video, a voice starts to creep in, which is, why are you doing this? You have a life that you want, but you're not living that. And I was living a double life. And in 2010, after a crazy night out on Christmas Eve, I looked in the mirror, there was sweat dripping down my face. I had to be at my sister's house for Christmas. And I arrived, I walked upstairs, I got in my nephew's bed. He was downstairs, you know, unwrapping presents with my, my niece and her family, my sister, and I just needed to sleep. And I left that day ashamed of myself, but it was a massive gift for me because it woke me up and I needed to change my environment. So this is the first thing I'm gonna say. For me, what really helped me was I had to make a difficult, difficult decision, which was to move out of the area that I was living in and find somewhere else to live that didn't have the triggers. And triggers is the key word. The people that I was around, not that they were wrong, but I didn't want to be part of that. And so I had to look at, well, every Friday night there was a trigger there and then that would set me off. So I had to remove myself, create a different environment. And what happened was, even though the addictions, they didn't completely stop, they started to reduce. And so that's what I want you to think about. What is something that you can do, and maybe it's the same thing, that can reduce that, okay? Now, the other thing I didn't understand at the time was that my addictions were directly linked to my trauma, the trauma of my bullying. And so sometimes we don't understand that, and I didn't understand that for many years, and so I'd been heavily bullied at the age of 13. And so that's how that started. And so the more I started to heal and speak about the bullying and speak about the trauma and speak about all of the things that I made wrong, you see, we put ourselves in a box and we think that other people haven't got through, uh, gone through things. And we think that if we share things and speak about things that other people are gonna abandon us. But it's in that expression, especially for guys, it's very difficult. But as we start to express that and talk about it, we can actually heal that. I actually wrote a book called The Black Ball. It's a very small book, but it talks about self-expression and talking about shame and talking about the things that we're embarrassed about. So there's that element. What massively also jump-started it um, through awareness, there were a couple of things. One, meditation, right? Taking me out of my head and, and into my heart, which was key to implement that practice. But also ayahuasca, plant medicine. Now there was a negative association there because it was like, oh, is this another drug? Ayahuasca is not a drug, it's a medicine. And so I took myself to Peru and I went into the jungle. You know, it was crazy and it was fearful, 
but I had this commitment and I wanted to change. And what happened was after I came out of the jungle, my desire for drinking and drugs, like it just, it went, I always say it went from like a high percentage to like losing it by like 80%. And then that created the space for me to do more work, do more energy healing, do more meditation. And then it just started to fall away. And a big turning point was back in 2017 when I suddenly realized my habits around drinking. And I started to realize, look, if I want to get here, if I want to live this life, like having this habit of going to an, a party. So this was my habit, right? I go to a party. And I, I couldn't win. I wasn't myself because I would, I would be there. I'd be anxious. And so people wouldn't get to know me. And then once I started to drink, I would obviously start to get drunk and people wouldn't get to know the real me. So I was like, I want to get people to know the real me. So I'm going to have to get uncomfortable and, and be in it without the alcohol. And so we have to go through that. We have to push ourselves through that. So these were the key components for me. Number one, a massive commitment massive commitment to better myself as a person, to invest in myself, to try, try lots of different things, to be able to speak about my trauma and, and identify that the, my addictions were directly linked to the trauma that I had at the age of 13 and the things that I needed to deal with and address and, and talk about and to get help around. And then also meditation and the plant ceremonies, but then also putting myself in an environment that was uncomfortable and training that new habit of not reaching for that thing. You see, when we're compulsive, right, it's, it's devastating. But there was also another turning point I just want to share with you before I wrap up, which is I'd gone through this really emotional time in a relationship breakup and I was in Bangkok at the time. And because I'd been meditating consistently, during the breakup, all of this emotion came up. So my nat natural pattern was to go and drink. So I got a lift down to the floor. The doors opened and I saw the bar. And so I was going over to get like a mojito or a beer or whatever it was. And as I walked over, this voice crept in and said, what if you went back upstairs and meditated? And that was a choice. I had a choice to make. And so I listened to that voice. And so I turned around, got the... Uh, lift back up to my bedroom in the room in the hotel and I meditated and then I, I started to slow down the rapid thoughts and so when we understand that our compulsion our addiction is linked to the rapid thoughts then we can actually implement a routine an energy routine to start to bring us into our heart so that in those moments right in that moment of compulsion in that moment of grabbing the drink in that moment of of you know opening you know the online a casino, whatever it is, we can, we can replace that with something else. And my replacement was meditation. Just understand, I, I get it, I understand it, I get where you are. But I also need you to understand that you're going to overcome it. You can create a whole new life for yourself if you make that decision. And if the, when the things drop in and those voices drop in, that are empowering, not disempowering, you listen to them. Because we have healthy soothing and we have unhealthy soothing. And I started to implement and bring into my life healthy soothing strategies versus the unhealthy soothing for the things like drugs, alcohol, gambling. And I know that the unhealthy soothing can sometimes even keep you alive. And so don't beat yourself up because I know for me, a lot of my pain was not in the actions that I took. It was, you know, I did some, you know, I said some bad things. I did some bad things, but it was also the beating of myself up that I did in the days afterwards and in the weeks afterwards. I share this with you because there is a new life and it's on its way. You manifested this video. You have a desire. It's just a matter of time. I'll see you in another video. Take care.